In the networking world, rivalries don't get much more ingrained than the Cisco crowd versus the Juniper gurus. Each company fills a specific niche within the computer networking world, with Cisco being by far the most valued when it comes to enterprise networking, but with Juniper being very heavily sought after by internet service providers. But which one is better? Sure, we could take the easy way out by comparing their massive differences in market cap or we could compare the laughable difference in their market shares, but are either of the mainline operating systems provided by either of these vendors objectively better or worse than the other? Well, that's exactly what we hope to answer today, so sit down and grab some flashcards because this is BrainMelt University, and today we're hoping to answer the question, Juniper versus Cisco, which is king? Cisco's flagship operating system is the Internetworking Operating System, or iOS for short. Take that, Apple. This operating system utilizes a command line interface to provide users the ability to input and output data. For most of its history, iOS has been its own beast, operating directly on the device's hardware. However, with the advent of iOS XE, iOS is now a specialized shell running within a Linux kernel. The commands are exactly the same, however, the Linux kernel now allows you to add additional specialized tools to your devices. It's difficult to describe the actual functionality of the iOS operating system, however it's best compared to the old school CMD on Windows computers. You're not really scripting or programming, you're primarily using predetermined commands in order to make changes to the device's configuration. If you're looking for an analogy, imagine being picked up by your friend and you both decide you want to go to dinner. Your friend might not know how to actually get to the restaurant, so you begin telling them when to turn left, when to turn right, and when to go straight. Your friend already knows how to drive their car, they just need you to input the variables to get them to the restaurant. Similarly, iOS already knows how to drive that router or switch, it just needs you to provide the information given the commands that it already knows. Now let's compare this to the Juniper operating system. The Juniper operating system, or Junos for short, is also a specialized shell, or CLI, that runs within a Linux kernel. However, older devices were based on a Unix kernel instead. So from this standpoint, it actually looks like Cisco is beginning to copy Juniper architecture rather than the other way around, which is a nice change. Junos operates much more closely to a traditional terminal CLI on a Unix or Linux device, so you tend to have greater control over the device and its operation than you do with Cisco iOS. Additionally, some Juniper devices also contain a graphical user interface, or GUI, which is accessed via a web browser and the HTTPS protocol. This can be a real asset for novice users who still aren't comfortable yet with the CLI offered by the Junos operating system. However, JWeb is not offered on all Juniper devices, so if you are working in a Junos shop, then you're gonna have to learn the CLI. Sorry guys. Junos operates almost like a scripting engine. Similarly to iOS, Junos already has all the instructions necessary for it to operate the device, but it needs you to input where this information is needed. However, rather than relying on a number of predetermined commandlets built into the operating system, Junos on the other hand is configured through direct manipulation of configuration files. To reuse our earlier analogy of you going to dinner with your friend, just replace your friend with a self-driving car. The car has all of the necessary instructions in order for it to know when to turn left and turn right. You simply need to input a destination into the car's GPS and it will make those determinations for itself. At least that's how self-driving cars are supposed to work. The tech's not quite there yet. But anyway, back to the networking. As we stated earlier, Cisco configuration relies on a number of predetermined commandlets in order to change the device's behavior. To provide a couple examples, imagine that we want to tell an interface to utilize the DHCP protocol in order to determine its IP address. We would first use the interface command to select what interface we want, and then we would use the command IP address DHCP to tell it use DHCP. This is probably the best time to talk about Cisco command structure. Typically, Cisco commands have a minimum of two parts. They will have a command followed by a variable. Using our example from earlier, say we want to configure our first gigabit ethernet interface. We would use the command interface gigabit ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1. Interface is the command, gigabit 101 is the variable. Sometimes a subcommand is also necessary in order to make a command work. Take our second example where we said IP address DHCP. IP is the primary command, 
address is the subcommand and DHCP is the variable, what we are hoping to set. All Cisco commands will follow the same command structure. Juniper, however, operates on a completely different principle. Remember how we said that Juniper already has all the instructions necessary to perform its task, it just needs you to input the variables? Well, these variables are input directly into your configuration files, which are hierarchical in nature, containing many trees, leaves, and other foliage-related terminology that's really only relevant to Juniper. Simply think of these as directories within a file system. These configuration files are interacted with via commands that are written using what are called CRUD verbs. CRUD is an acronym for the four ways in which we are able to interact with data. Create, read, update, and delete. All Juno's configuration input relies on a CRUD verb. The four CRUD verbs used by Juniper are set, show, rename, or in some cases replace, and delete. These CRUD verbs allow you to interact directly with specific lines within the configuration file. Let's compare Cisco input with the earlier example we used of Cisco. Rather than needing two separate sets of commands, one to select the interface and one to tell it what to do with IP addresses, Juniper can do all of this with a single command. In Juniper, the command would read as set interfaces gigabit ethernet 101 unit zero family inet address DHCP. Do not worry so much about what each of these words means as this is way beyond the scope of our video, but to oversimplify it a bit, interfaces gigabit ethernet 101 and unit zero are all subdirectories or directories within the configuration file. Family inet is simply identifying that you want to make alterations to the internet protocol on that interface and address says you want to change the address. In this case, you select a DHCP, so you want it to use the dynamic host configuration protocol to automatically select an IP address so that you don't have to statically input one. These are two very different ways of inputting information, but both are accomplishing exactly the same task. Before our brains melt too much, it's probably a good idea to take a step back and talk about navigating the operating systems. Both iOS and Junos have a lot of similarities. For instance, both of them use the show command to display configuration information about a certain device. For instance, if we want to see what the configuration currently looks like that is running on a Cisco device, we can use the command show running dash config. Pretty simple so far. In Junos, this is a very similar process, it's just a different name for the configuration file. In this case, in Junos, we simply type show configuration. Pretty easy. If you ever get lost in both Juniper and Cisco, the question mark is your best friend. For instance, if you know you want to alter a configuration on an interface, but you're not quite sure if a device has fast ethernet or gigabit ethernet interfaces, then you can type the word interface question mark on a Cisco device or interfaces question mark on a Juniper device. This will display information that is necessary for you to identify what is going on with interfaces and provide a list of the possible variables or subcommands that you can input into these two areas. Both operating systems allow you to use the up and down arrows to recall previously entered commands. This is really helpful if you're doing tasks that rely heavily on the exact same command over and over again just in different areas of the configuration file. Both operating systems allow you to autocomplete commands but go about it in two slightly different ways. In iOS, you use the tab key to autocomplete a command as long as there are no other commands that utilize those same starting letters. For instance, if you do not want to have to type out the entire word interface, you can simply type INT, at which point there are no other commands that start with those three letters, and if you press tab, it will autocomplete to the word interface for you. In Juniper, this task is actually accomplished by the spacebar. So if you type enough letters into the command string that no other commands start with those same letters, the spacebar will autocomplete that word. So the Juniper equivalent to interface is interfaces. So if you simply type INT and then hit spacebar, it will autocomplete two interfaces for you. Now this only works with predetermined areas of the configuration file, such as your different trees and leafs. However, this does not work with computer generated input, such as the names of certain VLANs and such. So if you want to autocomplete one of these, then you switch back to using the tab key, just like you do with Cisco. This is where the differences get pretty challenging for people who might be experienced with one of these operating systems, but not with the other. Having to remember the difference between a tab 
have in a space bar is pretty difficult. Additionally, Juniper does not allow you to shorten command strings. You have to type a Juniper command in its entirety, so having the ability to use a tab and space bar really helps you get that entire command string typed out because as we noticed from our earlier example of working with interfaces, commands in Juniper can get a bit wordy. Cisco, on the other hand, is not nearly so picky and will actually let you shorten certain commands once again as long as it's not ambiguous. No other commands start with those same letters. Let's take an example of what is quite possibly the most common command typed in Cisco iOS, and that is copy running-config space startup-config. This is basically the same as save as and saves your current configuration that is running to the startup location so that if your device ever has to reboot or loses power, then what is currently running will once again be loaded back into the device. Instead of having to type the entire command copy running-config startup-config, you can actually shorten this all the way down to cop RS. No other commands are going to start with those inputs. This drastically shortened command structure really speeds things up for experienced iOS users and contrasts pretty sharply with the very wordy and lengthy Juniper command structure, which must be typed in its entirety. However, experienced Juniper administrators using the autocomplete features tend to work almost as quickly as Cisco administrators using the shorthand commands. It's pretty common that you'll want to remove a configuration from a device's configuration. In Cisco, this is as simple as typing the word no in front of whatever command you use to set a configuration item. For instance, shutdown is used on interfaces to power them down and turn them off. This is kind of a security feature as well as a power saving feature as well. However, if we want to turn an interface back on for any reason, instead of saying turn on or something nice and intuitive like that, we would simply type the word no in front of shutdown, which powers it back on. So no shutdown is the exact opposite of shutdown. This works with almost all commands within iOS. In Junos, it is as simple as changing your CRUD verb. So if you used the set CRUD verb to add some sort of configuration item, so for instance, we're working with an interface and you want to power it down, the Juniper equivalent of shutdown is disable. So instead of using set disable, I'm cutting out all that middle just to shorten things down, then you can simply change your CRUD verb from set to delete, which will delete disable. So simple, so far. The biggest difference when you're working with these command line interfaces is that with Cisco, as soon as you hit enter on a command, that command is added to the running configuration. If you're dealing with more complicated processes that require multiple commands to be run, this means that your device is temporarily going to be running partial configurations, which is going to mean stuff's gonna break and you're going to start throwing a lot of error messages across your network. However, with Juniper, there is an additional step before your configuration changes are actually applied, and this is to use the commit command. Commits have two major advantages working for them. The first is that when you commit a configuration verification is made. The device will actually verify that whatever you have changed does not directly conflict with other configurations on that box. Cisco does not make these distinctions and simply assumes that you as the administrator have done your homework and know what not to do. This commit verification can be pretty frustrating for novice administrators. However, it is probably in your best interest to have such a feature to prevent you from breaking what is currently running on your device. The second major advantage of having a commit is that you're not going to have partial configurations just hanging out, throwing error messages across your network. You can completely stage a complicated process that requires multiple lines in your configuration file to be interacted with and then commit them all at once. No more partial configurations. This is also really helpful if you work at an organization that has specific configuration windows, which are periods of time when you're actually allowed to make changes to network devices, usually outside of normal business hours. With Cisco, it's a complicated process to make that work. With Juniper, it's a simple process of logging in and typing commit and enter. If you're enjoying this video so far, it would mean a lot to me if you would just boop that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're interested in seeing more content just like this, please feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get notified anytime I post new content. Now back to the video. Most operating systems have multiple levels of privilege where depending on what your level of trust is, you are permitted to perform different tasks on a device. 
Cisco iOS and Juniper Junos are no exceptions to this rule. iOS uses three different privilege modes, which is a little unusual. The lowest of these levels is called user exec mode, and user exec mode offers virtually no permission to do anything at all. Pretty much if you're in user exec mode, all you're really able to do is see that this device is currently running and accepting input. There's not a whole lot else you're allowed to do with it. User exec mode is identified with a caret prompt. If you want to do virtually anything with this device, you'll need to escalate your privilege into privilege exec mode. Privilege exec mode is where you're allowed to do a lot of your show commands where you're able to see what is currently running on this device and you're allowed to manipulate the file system to a certain extent. Privilege exec mode is identified with a hashtag hatchet or pound sign prompt depending on how old you are, I guess. However, if you want to make any changes to the actual configuration of this device, then it means means that you're going to have to once again escalate your privilege into the highest level available on iOS devices, which is called Global Configuration Mode. Global Configuration Mode is often referred to as ConfT Mode, as the command to move from Privileged Exec into Global Configuration is Configure Terminal, or if you're using Cisco shorthand, Conf T will get the job done. Global configuration mode is where you're actually able to alter the configuration and run many of those commands that are necessary to change how your device behaves. However, the vast majority of show commands are designed to run in privileged exec mode, and you cannot run privileged exec commands in global configuration mode. Do not fret, you're not going to be forced to constantly shift back and forth between privileged exec and global config there is a way to force privilege exec mode commands to operate while you're in global config mode. Simply type the word do in front of a privilege exec command while you're in global config mode, and it will temporarily, for that command string only, move you to privilege exec mode, run the command, and then move you back to where you were. This is a real time saver because you're not having to constantly type exit, conf t, exit conf t, etc. Global config mode is usually identified by the word config in parentheses followed by the hashtag. In Juniper, we have a more traditional two-level setup, and this is common with most operating systems. The lowest of these two levels is called operational mode, and it's pretty much the equivalent of privilege exec mode. In operational mode, you're allowed to make certain changes to the device itself, such as restarting daemons or rebooting the device. You can also make pretty extensive use of show commands, just like with privilege exec mode in Cisco. Since this is the lowest configuration level, this is identified with a caret prompt. So a nice thing to remember is that the lowest level on both Cisco and Juniper is identified with a caret prompt, even though the lowest level available in Juniper is still higher than the lowest level offered by Cisco. However, just like with Cisco, you're not allowed to change the configuration of your device from operational mode. You have to move into, get this, configuration mode. In configuration mode, you have the same basic limitations as iOS. You cannot run operational mode commands in configuration mode, except you can. You have to add the word run in front of your operational mode command, but you can execute operational mode commands in your configuration mode. So the Juniper equivalent to Cisco's do is run. Both do exactly the same thing. Configuration mode in Juniper is identified with a pound sign slash hatchet slash hashtag. Since we're talking about altering configuration files, this is probably a good time to segue into configuration files. Cisco devices contain two different configuration files. The first of these is called the running config, and this is the configuration file that is currently running on your device pretty self-explanatory. Anytime you enter a new command into a Cisco device, it is automatically added into the running config. The running config operates within your random access memory, which means that as soon as the device loses power, then the running config is completely lost. So we need something stored in non-volatile memory in order to have something to start up with. This is where our second configuration file comes in, and this is our startup-config file. The startup config is stored in non-volatile RAM, so even though it is RAM, it's non volatile. It is not lost if the device loses power or restarts for any reason. However, just because you type a command in Cisco does not necessarily mean that that configuration change is moved automatically to the startup config file. This is where that command I talked about earlier, the copy running config startup config, is so important because this is basically taking your running config and overwriting the startup config file. It's basically the equivalent of save as and selecting an existing file to serve as our destination. Juniper handles configuration files in a very different way. The main configuration file is called the active configuration, and this is both what is used while it's currently running and at startup. So the active configuration does not need to be manually copied.
copied over to a startup config file like it does with Cisco. However, like I mentioned earlier, just because you enter commands into a Juniper device doesn't necessarily mean they are being automatically added to the active config. Instead, we have to remember to type that commit command. When we make changes to a device's configuration, we're actually altering what is called a candidate configuration. The candidate configuration contains all of the planned changes to the active configuration. When we type the word commit and hit enter, we are actually overriding our active configuration with our candidate configuration. But what happens if something goes wrong? Well, with Cisco, you're just kind of SOL. There is no backup anywhere in the device of previous configuration files. However, with Juniper, Juniper will actually keep up to 50 copies of previous configurations. Every time you make a change to the active configuration, it will create a newer revision. It will save a copy of the old revision in memory so that you can actually recall some of these older versions if you do something that has unintended side effects. By default, Juniper devices will store 50 different versions of your active configuration, though you can alter this number through the command line. Juniper devices also make use of an awesome tool called a rescue configuration. This is basically a disaster recovery methodology. In the event that your active config becomes unreadable and you have absolutely no way to get into the device, you can load in a rescue configuration, usually from some sort of method provided on the physical device itself, whether that's some sort of LCD panel or whether it's just a button that you have to use a poker tool to get to. These rescue configurations can give you basically everything you need to provide emergency access back into that device, such as IP addressing and SSH credentials. Cisco devices do not have a rescue config, but you can manually create a file that does almost the same thing. An administrator will still have to manually break into your device in order to accomplish this, but Cisco, as a general rule, does not contain a rescue configuration. Newer iOS XE devices do have this mythical thing called backup and VRAM. However, Cisco's pretty hush-hush on exactly what this does and how it operates. So until it gets added to Cisco certification stuff, we're just kind of stuck guessing what it does. So that about wraps up our comparison between iOS and Junos, but which of these is better? Which is king? Well, it really depends on your needs, your skill sets, and your experiences. Cisco has a drastically simpler command structure and utilizes much shorter command strings, making it easier for you to memorize how to perform certain tasks, especially for users who have little experience with command line interfaces. There's also a metric butt ton of training materials out there on the internet for Cisco devices. This is due to Cisco's much more established training networks and certification pipelines. It's also due to the fact that in the Western world, Cisco is the preferred vendor for enterprise networking. However, to users who have a decent level of knowledge with data serialization languages, scripting engines, and RESTful APIs, the Juniper command structure just makes way more sense. And while it might be longer and more difficult to type out, it's easier to translate for your RESTful APIs if you are attempting to automate. Juniper tends to be preferred by internet service providers, so if you're working for an ISP rather than for any other organization, you're more likely to be forced to use Juniper anyway. There's not nearly as much training material out there as Juniper's Network Academy is not nearly as well established as Cisco, but Juniper does tend to post its own training materials for free for anyone who wants it. Juniper's much greater utilization of redundancy and backups for configurations means that they come with a lower risk factor than with Cisco devices. And Juniper's commit feature means that it's going to be much more difficult for novice administrators to break your network configurations. Ultimately, the determination of which is better is going to come down to the same usual factors. Which vendor is going to give you the most functionality for the lowest cost and provide the most support and training for your team? And which is going to be easier to learn based on your team's collective skill sets and experiences? Well, there you have it. That was our side-by-side -side comparison of Junos and iOS. Stay tuned in the future when we go through a initial configuration on both Junos and iOS. IOS devices. Until next time, it's been real. Thank you for tuning into BrainMelt University, and I will see you all here later.